just looking at them from the front, the, the one on the left, the high country, is a much, much more expensive truck. A lot of you guys probably are not going to like the chrome bumper, but I like it. I kind of like it more than the painted one. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rebuild It. This week we continue on with the High Country Chevy Silverado Duramax. And we're hoping to get it all buttoned up and get it ready to send to Mike. So let's see what we can get done this week. Alright, so we've got that thing all bolted in and it's coming out a little bit right here. So I need to loosen that bolt back up inside and push it in, tighten it back up. Get all the wiring routed where it goes. Yep, it's bolted there. So we're just about done. We'll do a little adjustment and then we'll start to get the battery put back in and the, and the uh, air box. All right, so that's it. Everything is back together over here. Everything with the fender and all the stuff here is all reconnected and everything fits right. <clears throat> Wires are all in the right spots. So I will see you in a few days to weeks <laughs> whenever we get the rest of the uh, body panels back in painted and then we'll start the rest of the reassembly. Well, here we are in my parts room slash basement. And I've got a bunch of parts back in from Mike. He's got them all painted. There's the front bumper. There's the rear bumper, the fender, and the hood. So everything looks really nice. So that's the thing I've been waiting on right there is the fender. So I'm going to go get the old one, get all the clips out of it. If you'll remember from the other Silverado we did, there's like 9 million screws and clips that have to go in there to hold up that um, fender liner. So let's go get that started. Well, I've got all this, the old fender. I've got all the clips and things out of it. And installed on to the new one. See all those, there's just a million of them. They're kind of hard to get in and out. So got all that done. So now let's, I'm gonna go ahead this time on the last one, I learned a few things. I think it's easier to put the uh, fender on without that fender liner on. You can do it, but it's easier to reach these holes where some clips go in um, from the wiring harness. So I'm going to put the fender on by itself, make sure all the wires are routed right, and then we'll do the fender liner later. All right, so after a whole bunch of adjusting and twisting and pulling, I finally got that fender on there. The gap is probably 95% good. It probably needs a little bit more down at the bottom pulled forward. Got everything lined up in here and routed the right direction. Once it gets the battery in, I will anyway. So I just got to tighten up all these little 10 millimeter bolts and then we should be able to put the battery back in. So now that I've got the fender on, it's time to start thinking about the hood. And I'm going to do just like I did on the last truck. Got the new hood laying in here and the old one smashed one over here and we'll just transfer everything from that one to that one and hopefully it's just like the other one was there's not much that can get damaged on this thing so there was nothing damaged on the last truck so and this one even has 
uh, five of the six of those rubber <laughs> pieces. That last one I think only had like one. So I have to find one of those. But let's start taking that apart and transferring it over. So we've got everything switched over to the new hood. So I'm gonna get my wife to come down here and help me to lift it up on here. And we'll just kind of loosely get it bolted in the hinges and uh, probably just get it in for the night, uh, see how, how it lines up and then uh, work on the getting the, the gaps right tomorrow. It's pretty close. This this gap over here is a little bit wide out here, or maybe a little narrow in there. And this one looks about right. So I think the hood needs to needs to adjust like this a little bit. But anyway, it latched all the way down, so that's really close. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more adjusting, and then we'll start working on the front bumper. All right, so I've got the hood all adjusted, and I'm happy with the gaps. So now ready to go on to the next stage, which is the bumper. There's a smash bumper. There's all the bunch of the new parts I've got and I'll get the other bumper and get it set up in here and we'll just start transferring what we can and figuring out what's broken and all that and seeing what we need to get ordered if, there's, if we don't have everything. All right, it's the next day. And as always, when you're taking something apart, you find more broken stuff up inside there on, on this bumper. This big heavy bracket is actually kind of warped, twisted in the wreck. It should be, instead of that end, kind of sticking up like this, it should be laying flat on the ground there. So I had to order another one of those and it's here. So we have that and I need some clips, which also came in today. So now we can finish getting this thing bolted down and I've got all the sensors installed and new i had to get a new wiring harness and that's all routed correctly so i just finished putting this thing together i also have to put the uh there's like what they call a skid plate that goes up here it's kind of a fake chrome thing it's actually shiny plastic but that goes in there and then uh we'll be long we can get it put on the truck Right, so here is our completed bumper and they did do a good job on these uh, when I flip it over you'll see they're a really nice looking bumper I kind of like chrome ones just because I like the bling on, the, on a, the front of a truck but these look good for painted a lot of you guys like painted better so what I need to do now is measure the distance between that hole and that hole because those are what mount in front of the truck. And remember we had to replace this collar over here. So this this one right here is just uh, we're just not bolted. So we gotta make sure we get the same distance. This one is bolted in the exact same spot it was from factory because I, I still had outlines of all the washers everywhere. So that one's right. So we need to measure over the same distance. And I measured in there, it's 38 and a half inches. So we'll measure from that to here and bolt all these or tighten all those down where we get exactly 38 and a half from bolt to bolt. So we'll do that and then we'll see how it's looking when we try to set it up there. So we set the bumper up there and believe it or not, all the holes lined up perfectly. I mean, you did not have to do anything. They just dropped right in the hole. So that's awesome. But then I realized that the headlights have to go on first because they get bolted right in there and it's almost impossible to reach that with the bumper on. So luckily we didn't tighten anything. So I'm just gonna take those four bolts back off and set it on the ground and stick the headlights on. 
and hopefully they all fit and then uh, we'll put the bumper right back on. Say out of fin. Right, so we did. Uh, we got the headlights on and checked everything. And everything works. I've got the bumper plugged up, which has the fog lights, which we have not checked yet, and the uh, front parking sensors. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck up, and hopefully we don't have any more. Usually the sensor light comes on, saying there's no parking sister sensors. So I'm not even sure how to turn the fog lights on, but let's start it up. Everything works up there. So all I've got left is the front grill, and I've got to do bolt a few things up under here, some little braces. But man, everything lines up extremely well, and hopefully it does when we get the grill on there. That's the true test because if your headlights are just a little bit too far in or something that it's not all going to fit. So we'll do that tomorrow when we have daylight. All right, so I've got the truck crammed back in here in the shop again, <laughs> and I went ahead and bolted, got everything tightened on, tightened down on this front bumper. So all the bolts are solid and I got the braces and all that all tight. So this thing is on there where it's supposed to go. So now if I remember right, I hope, I think that you got a, not a whole lot of space in here to get that grill in here, but I think it fits down in there. We'll unpack this grill and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's a grill unwrapped, and that is a genuine GM grill. Ooh. Looks a little different than the one on the 19. If I can remember right, I think there's a little bit more chrome on that 19. Anyway, let's see if it clips on there, and I think that the Chevy emblem um, was damaged. Here it is, but it's kind of, Let's see, it's kind of warped out the wrong direction over here. I was gonna to try to heat that and see if it would bend back because from GM, these are 65 bucks or something. So let's see if that'll work before we put the grill on. Although we could just snap this on later, but. Okay, so there's the grill. And man, it is like right on. I mean, it lined up perfecto. It's hard to see since there's no room in here, but I'm really happy with that. It just snapped right in, all the screw holes lined right up. The hood looks really good with it. Gaps are good. So it's always a big relief whenever you get it all back together and the gaps are right and all that. So I could not get the uh, Chevy emblem to bend back right. It was cracked. So I got to order one of those that just snaps on. And I got to put that fender liner back in there. Other than that, we'll be we'll do that, those few little things next. And then we'll need to get this back prepped for Mike. I'm going to get all the uh, logos and stuff off the tailgate. and. He's got to decide whether he wants to try to repair this or order a bedside. So after uh, we do these few other things, it'll be going to him. All right, so I'm about ready to button up the top of this thing, get the plastic panel on and all that. I was waiting on one piece and it came in right here. It's a little brace that goes right across there. And believe it or not, I have not missed a single bolt. Wow. You remember when I showed you at the first of this uh, project, they, whoever took this thing apart gave me these bags, or they were in the truck, full bolts and stuff, and I have every, every one I've needed has been in there. But now I haven't done the uh, back bumper yet, and there's another bag over there for it too, but I'm sure it'll all be in there too, so. There's all the bolts that are for the fender liner. And I'm getting ready to put on, and there's all the clips for that top piece. I'm getting ready to put on, and there's the other bolt right here for that little clip or little uh, brace. So kudos to whoever took this thing apart. Okay, 
Okay, so we got the inner fender liner in, new mud flap, all this uh, plastic covering up here, and I still need to detail the motor, get it all cleaned up once we get it outside. And really, I'm, I got this coming, it should be here in the next day or two. And that's about it for until Mike gets it. Let's see, I still have to put that whole rear bumper together, so I'll probably film that. All right, so I've got the truck out of the shop. And I've got our rear bumper new one laying in here. It's been freshly painted. And the smashed one. We'll just start attacking it and see if we can figure it out. So I've got a lot of this apart and of course found some damage that I didn't know about. I've got a busted, there's a little, I'm calling it a pad, but it's just hard plastic. It's kind of like a spacer that goes between the steel part of the bumper and that black cover. This one's okay over here, but this one over here has got all the tabs broke off. So I had to order one of those. And then I've got a bolt that's stripped down in there. I had to order that bolt. And I've already got that stuff because I knew that was smashed. Looks like the uh, wiring harness is good. So I'm just gonna transfer it over. And I, there's a lot of dirt and stuff up in there. So I took these out and power washed them. And so it's about time to go ahead and <laughs> there's a few little things I can do uh, while I'm waiting on parts to come in, like get this installed and get the other one put together or at least put in with all the bolts except one, get my uh, wiring harness strapped through there and my sensors installed. Where all I gotta do when the parts come in is snap those pieces on and then put my um, wiring for the for trailer lights and then this is the way you access the spare tire. I'm gonna put that back in and then those little steps so it's not been super hard, it just takes a little while to figure out what order everything goes on and off. So I'll continue on as far as I can go until the parts come back. All right, so I'm getting ready to load the uh, high country on that trailer to take it to Mike's for paint. And I thought while I was doing that, I would kind of compare these two trucks, the looks of them anyway, see what you guys think because they might not ever be here at the same time again. The one on the right might end up being sold before I get the one on the left back. So, because the one on the left is the one I'm keeping. Just looking at them from the front, the one on the left, the High Country, is a much, much more expensive truck. But I kind of like the chrome on the right, the bumper. A lot of you guys probably are not going to like the chrome bumper, but I like it. I kind of like it more than the painted one. But as far as uh, looks, go really that's the chrome front bumper and the badging is really about it on the uh two everything else is pretty much the same on the outside you got you know chrome mirrors and the mirrors automatically fold in on the high country and they don't on the regular truck and you got your chrome skid plate down there on that one and all your parking sensors in the bumper you can see on that one this one is just a plain chrome bumper the grill is a little bit different. Looks like there's two bars above the center bar and two bars below on that one. There's only one on that one, which I think I kind of like that one better too. Maybe I'm just a bling guy. Maybe I just like bling. Your uh, little hood vent is the same on both. We got fog lights on this one, nothing on this one. So I have to put the badges up on the hood for the Duramax. You have a paint colored shark fin and just a black one on this one. We've got the square type running boards on this one and the round ones on this one. You got chrome door handles versus black. The wheels, those are the aftermarket dirty fuel wheels that in my opinion sit way too far out and throw you know mud and everything else up on your paint and there's not enough space to put a uh, there might be on the back one, but there's definitely not on the front 
enough space to put mud guards like I've got on this one on here because it just rubs. The back of them is identical, except for this one will, once we get it fixed, we'll have the parking sensors on the bumper. This one has the tailgate that you just flick it and it lowers nice and smooth and slow. And remember this one has the gooseneck attachment. This one, if you tried that, it would just go wham, hit the ground. <laughs> And it's got the fifth wheel rails, but not the fifth wheel in it. Everything else on those is the same. The bumper, that bumper will be white painted, of course, and this one's chrome again. But other than that, the main difference between these two things is the interior. And I mean, what a huge difference. You know, here we have the plain, just plastic dash and uh you know i've got the seat covers on still but these seats are like spotless you know it's just got your three but buttons right here and just a smaller screen that it does connect to your phone as the car play and all that like where this one has like every option as far as i know I mean, you've got the big screen you've got all look at all those different buttons up there that have to do with your, your pedal extension your uh rear uh, work lights and parking assist and lane assist and all that stuff plus you just have this awesome saddle leather that i love it's got like automatic you know you just flip this button to get into four wheel drive or that that one over there is in the floor you pull the lever to get into four wheel drive but anyway i just thought also this has a sunroof i just thought i would kind of remind you the difference between these two while i have them side by side which is not probably going to happen again. Oh, this one also has the sliding glass, but this one does not. Well, we got quite a bit done on the truck this week, more than I thought. So it looks like we're going to only have, I'd say, one more episode, a finale episode on the high country because uh, all we got left is paint and just a few little things to button it up. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give us a thumbs up down below and we'll see you on the finale. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.